You come back to West Point, you remember what you once were. And maybe that fire of integrity burns a little brighter. I come here for that. My youth was growing up as an army brat, as they would call us. I then became a military person when I accept an appointment at West Point. West Point, as this epitome of leadership, training, and education, has all of that based on a foundation of honor. Well, after graduation, I went to Stanford. So I graduated from Stanford as a first lieutenant as an Airborne Ranger and was assigned to the 101st Airborne. So when I reported in, I said, sir, Lieutenant Buecher here to report to the 101st. He said, okay, I'm gonna give you something really special. You're gonna be a company commander. And I said, yes, sir, what company would that be? He says, Delta Company, third of the 187th. I said, sir, I didn't know Delta had a Delta company. I thought there was A, B, and C. He said, you're forming it. And for the next month, you're gonna be the only one. And that meant I would get anybody who didn't want someone could send them to my company and we would accept them. The losers of all losers, including me because <laughs> no one wanted to go to war with me either. Uh, we were sent to the most dangerous place in Vietnam. And when I, we were transitioning, he says, this is hell. This is hell on earth. We wouldn't just go out on a mission, come back and sit for five days. You came in from a mission and you were all right. You went out two or three hours later. On the night of the 18th, around four o'clock in the afternoon, I had Quite a few people from heat prostration had to have been medevaced out. Left 89 of us. So we were technically at half strength. Most of the time, just as it was getting dark, you'd stop. We pressed on. My men said, I see water carriers, people carrying rice. One of the LERP people, which is a long range patrol that was assigned to me, I said, can we fire a few rounds just to see what happens? And the entire mountain returned fire. Two rounds, and, and I said, oh my God. And there were heavy caliber machine guns. And I heard in the radio, another six or seven didn't make it. I told everybody, we're gonna throw hand grenades on a random, and I don't care where you throw them, just throw them outside the perimeter. That's what we're gonna do, and we're gonna just go around. And I'll say left, right, those two will fire. I'll say front and back, they'll fire. And just throw hand grenades. And I would do that all night long, and my idea was, and this was somewhat delusional that we would trick them, if you will. I'd say, wow, this must be a pretty big unit. If they'd known we were actually 89 people, less 10, 79 people, they would have just attacked and wiped us out. And then I got a radio call from an Australian pilot. I said, who are you? He said, I'm a Canberra jet with two 750 pound bombs and I understand you're in a pickle. I said, can you lower a couple of the mountains, the hills, just knock them down a little bit? He says, you got it, keep your head down. And whoosh, out of nowhere came this jet, and, poof, and we bounced. And when I turned around, my men were all laughing, and I started laughing. And we realized, we're not in this alone. Next morning, I get a call on the radio. It says, all right, it's time for you to move out. I said, I think we've done enough. As I originally described these guys, in the institution of the Army had judged them as losers. They were among the most decorated in that entire war, where they proved themselves to be winners. When 10 men die, and the person in charge failed to bring them home, but somehow that legitimizes a story for a medal. When I got notified that I was to receive it, I told the sergeant who called me that I was going to turn it down. And he said, who the hell do you think you are? This isn't about you, this is about your men. You wear this medal for them. And therefore, if there is an attribute called hero, they deserve it, not me. Every time I come to West Point, they know their job. It's not gonna pay them any money. It's not gonna send them to Paris, France. It's gonna send them to a place they can't find on a map, whose language they cannot speak and whose culture they do not understand. And they're gonna to be told to not go once, but twice, three times, four times, five times. And you're going alone. And they come, and they still come. And I tell them, I'm getting far more out of this than you are. And for that, I apologize. 
but I don't care. I have to get inspired too. And when I meet them, they are inspiring.